love that every day is different. No two days are the same. Like just the conditions, you just you break a toe. There's always something going on out there and it's never the same and the people, you know, are different every day. My name's Jackson Borick. And I'm Lizzie Cunnington, and we're owner operators of Noosa Sport Fishing Lodge. We're pretty lucky to live here. It's a great location. With the fishing here, we've got a great diversity of both tropical and subtropical species. And then in terms of the lodge here in Noosa, we're over here on the Noosa North Shore, which is beautiful and quiet. And you'll see we're kind of in the middle of nowhere here, yet we're just a stone's throw away from the town of Noosa. So it really is a great location for us. And having the boat just outside the um, lodge here just means that we can head straight out offshore and it's just awesome. <laughs> the lodge here on the Noosa North Shore is, it's really key to what we do here. It sets, the, sets us apart from everyone else. The property here, we um, can take up to six guests and very, very beautiful accommodation. Myself and Jackson, we host the lodge here as well. So um, you don't have to lift a finger while you're here. It really is luxury fishing. And we also have a private chef on board as well. So um, you get the whole lot when you come here. We wanted to just spoil you straight up and put that seafood platter out. So that was really good. It's a, you know, we say it's a bit of an experience and it's an event as well, having that with, you know, your family and friends and whoever you choose to bring to the lodge. So that was 10 out of 10. Big feed that night early to bed and we sent it in the morning. Dolphin fish were a bit slow. It was a bit was a, You could have just picked away at them all day like we were and maybe you would have got a big one, but we sort of called it after a, a fair few and had a quick troll and it's sort of as it happens, you know, the wahoo was straight away mm. and lost it. Winding, 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 winding. It was a wahoo. Yeah, so that sucked. Uh, most likely a wahoo, but uh, we'll blame Jack for that one. Easiest target on the boat today. <laughs> and then, yeah, ran into the beach and it's a pretty sure thing, like this time of the year, tuna hug the beach, so that was awesome. Just, I think we did like a K down the beach, beach combing for tuna and yeah, we found them and that was it. Oh, yes! Just, yeah, longies yes, everywhere. Man. That Spanish was good. There probably would have been more of them. If, you know, if someone really wanted to do hit that, we could have hit them with the big stick bait yep. and plugged away on Spanish as well as um, long tails. Uh, go on. How you going, Jack? Yeah, recreational fishers, uh, charter fishers are exempt because of prior booking. So uh, if you want to catch a mackerel this year, you've got to come on a charter boat. So, that is uh, a donkey. Yeah, nice fish. He'll turn into some sashimi later on. Um, so we've got our quota now. We'll be putting everything else back. But uh, hopefully we can get a few more of them and another long tail and the sharks stay away and everything. It's pretty good. Good on you, mate. Well Thanks, done. Mate. Awesome it's a nice it's fish. <laughs> I think we're at long tail number 423 at the moment. <laughs> yeah, there's been plenty of double bending and um, big pilot whales straight through the middle of the school. Jack got a mackerel that I called a bit smaller. I reckon it was more like 16 plus kilo. Yeah. <laughs> so it's been a pretty epic session. So that was a few boxes ticked. It was good fun. A bit of mayhem. The boat was a bit of a mess. Um, sorted that out though. <laughs> and then, yeah, this morning was um, God, I thought it was going to happen there for a bit, didn't it? Yeah. It's like the first 20 minutes. I reckon it was a sailfish. We'll review the footage. But um, yeah, had him up on the teasers. He just tried to switch him, but he sort of dove off the, the teaser and dropped back and ate the swim gar and had him on. And yeah, got a few good jumps out of him and just spat the hook. Oh, no. Bugger! Gutted! Gutted! We just oh. said it, hey! We we're in the zone, the birds are here, the bait balls are here. Got two good jumps out of him. Yeah, look like a sail. Noosa Bar is treacherous and shallow and it just sucks. 
So uh, you have to go a cat just for the draft. Like that thing, we pretty much have zero restrictions with that boat. Like most boats have to go, you know, after a certain tide height or that sort of thing, but we just hit it whenever. We've been pretty fine. I think today was the first time I've actually touched it. And we only, we're just trying a new channel. So I haven't only been out of that one once, so. Good afternoon, Coast Guard. We'll be making an urban crossing of the bar. Okay, here we go. The Noosa Bar is very notorious um, for its shallowness, unpredictable, and all of the above. So, at the moment, the channel is absolutely horrible. So, we'll show you what it's like firsthand to be up front shotgun over the bar. And we're away holding on. I don't know if you can see how close we're gonna come into the beach here, but it's pretty intense, bit of a roll. And then, so we get the waves side on through this section, but yeah, there's the beach, there's the sandbar. Yeah, it's, yeah, that's it's pretty, pretty full on. But yeah, had to do a cat, had to do outboards, wasn't um, the major preference, but it's pretty good compromise, it goes good. It's like 0.6, I think that thing draws, so it's not bad for a 30 footer. If, if I was ever going to tell someone something that wants to buy a cat, just go and drive one first, they're um, different. Yeah, they're pretty tender, they roll rock around a little bit, and um, it's the most sensitive boat I've ever driven that cat out there. It's the smallest changes you make to it make the huge difference, just trim and props and everything, like even swapping the gearboxes side to side, which we did just to make the bum go down instead of up, um, get the bow out of the water. It's, yeah, it's a really sensitive boat. You want to get the air under the boat while you're driving a cat, so you want to trim it up, give it a bit of speed. When you go too slow in these boats, it's, it becomes jolty and that sort of thing, so you've got to find a sweet spot. This boat's good between sort of 21 and 27 knots, somewhere in that bracket, depending on conditions and all that. So, yeah, just find the sweet spot. Uh, wise man once said, no, 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 your boat. Uh, but the piece de resistance is the live well. Right in the middle, we went with a big American style live well. It's 800 and something high. It's an oval, holds around 350 litres of water. And um, yeah, we've got a pretty big pump running that. So that thing's awesome. It's changed our game. It's just having the right bait always is key to getting the better quality fish a lot of the time. Like how many times you sit in there and on fish and you run out of bait or they die or just something's not right, you know? And you know, when slimies are all doughy and then fish don't eat them. Yeah, but it just doesn't happen anymore. <laughs> Yeah, Paul, we've got 300 uh, V8 Verados pushing the boat. It's probably overpowered, but it's fine with me. Um, I like an engine to work less to do the same amount of things, so you know, it's good for the long jeopardy of the engine. Uh, we've got around 1,100 litres of fuel behind that, so uh, it's, yeah, I think Kevlar Cat have only done a couple boats with the big tanks in them, so they're good. Yeah, about to stern, uh, there is, we've got 800 high rails at the front, so it's survey height, so we can get up there and play around. And I think you saw Lizzie the other day sending slugs off the bow at Tuna, that was pretty good. <laughs> uh, on top, we got a Halo Radar, uh, two 16 Simrads, um, Evo 3s. Yeah, good bit of kit. It's the first time I've had Simrads, so yeah, they're crispy, clean. No complaints yet. They read really good at speed. Three transducers on the boat. We've got a SS175 medium chirp, which is you know, sort of beyond 150 meters, I suppose. We just, I run that at the same time as our, um, we've got a pocket mount 175 low high wide. So we use that for everything sub 100 and all our game fishing. Um, I put the medium on when we're out heavy tackle and I can read the bottom and just look for lumps and that sort of thing. Uh, that should be good for five, six hundred, like crisp as. So 
We've also got a side scan transducer because we, when the weather's foul or someone doesn't really want to go out, you know, we get um, heaps of barra in the river here. I say heaps, get a few. Do a lot of looking at them on the sounder, but uh, yeah, that's imperative to what we do. You know, find the barra live, got the bait in the tank. Yeah, have a hang on them, and yeah, that's pretty exciting as well. We've got a lot of rods and reels. <laughs> uh, our main sort of rods we use are to res overheads, so we run all our marlin on that sort of stuff, live baiting, float lining, slow trolling, fast trolling. So they're awesome. Um, we run Talikas, Speedmasters on top of them, a couple of Trinidads as well. The, um, the new Speedmasters we had to play with were pretty good too. It was, um, it was nice to cast one as well. They, yeah, it's centre right. And shame we didn't switch that sailfish on it today, but it is what it is. We've got the new Anthems, they're pretty good. So we've got a light ones and heavy ones of those. So Lizzie runs a brand new Stratic on them. Lizzie stands on the bow and sends an 80 gram chromie and just catches five times as many fish as anyone else on the boat. <laughs> Tuna just skipping and then she swings the rod around and she's like, grab my fish. <laughs> Take it away. <laughs> yeah. Every time. It's good, isn't it? Right? That's is good. All the boys yeah. have a laugh because they can't cast as far or yeah, get the fish yeah, in as quick. I, and... I like it. It just feels solid and I'm very confident with it and it feels powerful when you got like a tuna on there and you just bring it in and yeah, you know, the sharks are buzzing around and got a, it's got a bit of go about it. What else do we do? TLDs. I've still got TLDs that are like 20 years old. I've still got a Speedmaster, one of the original black ones down there that I still use. Yeah, you're welcome, Shimano. I've spent a lot of money with you guys, so... <laughs> <laughs> Send some our way, please. <laughs> <laughs> Love that every day is different. No two days are the same. Like, just the conditions, you just you break a toe. There's always something going on out there and it's never the same and the people, you know, are different every day. And it's just good, you know, sun, smiles, all the fun stuff, just different stuff, just keeping it new. What about you, Lizzie, yeah. what do you reckon? I like the suspense that fishing brings. Mm. You know, if, it, if you were guaranteed all the time, it'd probably get a bit monotonous, but just the fact that, yeah, it gets mixed up all the time and you get surprises and you just have really epic days and yeah, long days and that feeling of when you get back off the water of a long day, it's just, you got that oh, tired feeling, but just so happy and yeah, it just, it's great. <laughs> that would be a good shot, Nate. Yeah. Oh, uh, I'm off.